Hello there, welcome back to the channel, hope you're safe and well. In this video we're going to be talking about air gun pellets. So let's roll the titles. Let's begin by looking at the four main types of pellets that you'll come across. So first we have the, perhaps the most common, which is the domed or round nose pellet. Moving on to the flat headed pellet, sometimes called a wad cutter. And then to the hollow nosed pellets. And there's a fourth kind, which is the pointed pellet, which I don't have an example of, so here's a picture. Now one of the things that you may have noticed with all of these pellets is they appear to have a common shape. They have a hollow skirt that it's, that's designed to uh, expand when the pellet is shot and grip onto the inside of the barrel, be it smooth bore or rifled. If it's rifled, then this will cause the pellet to spin and follow the rifling. And they also have a skinny waist. And you'll notice that the bulk of the pellet is up uh, in the head, which moves the, uh, the mass of the pellet and the centre of gravity forward, which aids the pellet in flight. This shape of pellet is referred to as Diablo because it resembles the child's juggling toy called a Diablo. Here's a picture of one. All of these uh, different shapes then have different uses. Let's start with the uh, round nose pellet which is of all of them probably the most general use pellet. It can be used for target shooting, plinking, hunting, uh, full range of air gun activities. The flathead pellet however is a uh, more specifically used for target shooting at shorter ranges, usually of the order of uh, 10 metres to 20 metres. The reason for this is because of the shape, uh, they tend not to be so accurate at uh, further distances. And um, they've been developed with that shape because the, uh, the head, then being also referred to as a wad cutter, um, tends to punch out a more perfect uh, circle in a card target than the other types so it makes for uh, easier scoring when target shooting and also uh, easier to see uh, where you've hit the target. Uh, the third and fourth categories then the hollow points and the um, pointed pellets are designed specifically for shooting um, the idea is that on impact the, um, the head of the pellet will deform uh, and then have a greater uh, killing effect uh, on your prey. In effect, uh, doesn't seem to uh, deform so much these pellets at uh, 12 foot pound. Uh, they tend, the deformation tends to work better for the higher powered air rifles uh, that you would have on a firearm certificate. Uh, as I said, under the sub 12 foot pound rifles, you tend not to notice the deformation so much, but um, they're what they're intended for anyway. Let's talk briefly about uh, pellet calibers then. In the sub 12 foot pound air rifle or air pistol categories, you're going to come across four main calibers. They are the 0 0.177, 0.20, 0.22 and 0.25 calibers. Now there are larger calibers, but they tend to be uh, for the higher power air, for air rifles that you would need a firearm certificate to own. So we're going to uh, just stick with the sub 12 foot pound pellets here. And out of those four that I mentioned, uh, the main two that you're going to come across are the 0.177 and the 0.22 caliber. So why those two calibers and which is best? Well, the 177 pellet being generally the lighter pellet 
will travel travel faster uh, from a sub 12 foot pound air rifle and therefore the trajectory will be uh, a lot flatter than the heavier 2.2 pellet which tends to have a more loopy trajectory. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about trajectory and how this is the case then take a look at this video up here uh, which I've made previously on the channel and um, that will tell you all you need to know. So as you can imagine with a flatter trajectory uh, 177 tends to be uh, the predominant choice for target shooting uh, which leaves um, 0.22 so why would you want to shoot 0.22 calibre? Well probably mainly for hunting but then that brings up the age-old question which calibre is best for hunting 0.177 or 0.22 calibre? Now I'm not going to go into that argument here because it's an old one and it's been going on for uh, for quite a few years. If you want to if you want to join the uh, join the uh, argument and the discussion, then go online to any of the air gun forums and you'll see that there's plenty of there to dive into for the different camps, the Pro 177 and the Pro 22. All I would do is uh, is is highlight one old adage. Uh, that that goes along the lines of um, uh, 177 for fur and 22 for feather in regards to hunting. And what they mean by that is that if your quarry is furry, uh, then the best choice is going to be 177. Uh, and if your quarry has feathers, then your best choice is going to be 22. Now I'm not going to go into that either, but uh, it's worth a look up if you're uh, if you're a hunter or you're planning to do any hunting and you want to determine what's going to be best for you. So uh, uh, get onto Google and Google that and uh, enjoy the ride. <laughs> Air gun pellets are available in quite a broad range of weights and their weight is measured in grams and in grains. Now what is a grain I hear you ask? Well my notes say that a grain is based upon the weight of a single grain of barley going back to medieval times in the UK and that grains are commonly used to measure the mass of bullets and propellants and are the standard unit used to weigh arrows in archery. So there you go, we learn something every day don't we? One grain is equal to 0.0647989 grams which means that one gram is equal to 15.4324 grains. So as you can see we are dealing with very small units of mass here. So what weight of pellet should I buy for my air rifle I hear you ask? Well that is not an easy question to answer. Unfortunately what's going to work best in your uh, air rifle or air pistol is uh, very much based on trial and error. You'll have to test different weights to find out what works best. All I would suggest is that a good starting point would be if you're 177 then consider starting with uh, something around an 8 grain pellet and if you're 22 then consider starting at something around a 15 grain pellet and work from there. So we've discussed weights, let's talk about head sizes. Now if you're shooting 2.2, there's not too much of an issue because most 2.2 pellets that I've looked at seem to be commonly, commonly, not commonly, seem to be commonly 5.5mm <laughs> head size. So um, that's all there is. Gets a little bit more um, complicated if you move to 177 because you can find pellets with head sizes from 4.50 up to 4.53. So similarly, what we said with weights applies here with head sizes. You may find that some head sizes are a bit of a tighter fit in your barrel. Uh, some head sizes are too loose. And uh, if you put the pellet in the breech and tip your rifle up, the pellet will fall out the barrel. So again, very much a case of trial and error. All I would say is uh, 
perhaps from the target shooting fraternity and certainly in uh, HFT, uh, most people t uh, tend towards the 4.52 head size. So that might be a good starting point, who knows. At the, uh, the date that I'm making this video, the, um, the predominant material for the manufacture of air gun pellets is still lead. We're still waiting to uh, hear, in the UK at least, what's going to happen with uh, um, lead ammunition and whether it, there's going to be an outright ban on the use of lead as air gun ammunition. Uh, so as a result of that, manufacturers are trying to look for lead three alternatives. Uh, the problem with uh, these lead free alternatives is that they're not as heavy as lead so consequently the pellets are lighter and uh, on a lot of people's tests they don't seem to be as accurate and obviously they're going to be more affected by wind. So um, for the most part, for the moment then, we're going to just consider that uh, uh, the, the, the main material uh, at the moment that uh, people are going to choose are lead pellets. So um, let's talk a little bit about uh, how these pellets are produced. Now, um, I'm going to discuss really two main manufacturers because uh, they're, they're the ones that I've, I know through my research the most about their manufacturing methods, and they are uh, JSB and H&N. Now, with both of these manufacturers, they start with uh, as pure lead as they can get, which is... I think from what I've read, just under 98% pure lead. The problem is though, that pure lead is a bit too soft uh, for the ideal air gun pellet. So in order to make the material harder, um, they add a, uh, a substance called antimony, um, which is, um, is added to the molten lead to, uh, uh, to make the resulting lead that they produce uh, hard enough uh, for an effective pellet. Now the amount of antimony they use is going to, I think, vary between uh, manufacturers and uh, it tends to be one of these closely guarded recipes or a secret as to how much they use. Um, so, so the pellet that you're putting in your air rifle or air pistol is going to be a mixture of lead and antimony. Now to begin with, they both uh, produce uh, from the molten lead they produce spools of lead wire. Uh, on the part of um, H&N, they strictly control uh, the diameter of the lead wire that they produce uh, using a computer instrument on the, uh, the production line uh, to ensure that the wire that they produce is uh, the thickness of the wire or the diameter is maintained uh, to pretty tight tolerances throughout the length of the spool of the wire because they produce wire uh, for different for the uh, different calibers of uh, pellets so they'll produce a spool of wire for uh, 0.177 pellets and a different spool of wire for 0.22 pellets for example um, <clears throat> their wire is fed straight into a machine uh, the pellet press uh, and that cuts the wire to the correct size so they get a little slug of wire uh, that will go in the pellet press to produce uh, the pellet uh, to the tolerances they want without any waste. JSB do it slightly differently. Um, they, from what I've seen, their wire isn't manufactured to uh, such tight tolerances because they push their wire through a machine that punches out lead balls and the lead balls are produced at the exact weight for the pellet that they want to manufacture so again they can put those lead balls uh, into their pellet press and that will press a pellet without any waste once they produce those uh, lead balls they then add uh, an oil to the balls uh, which is uh, pr primarily a release agent to allow the pellet to uh, come out of the press. Uh, once the pellets are put through the press, uh, through the die that creates the pellet shape, 
uh, then they do try and remove the uh, uh, the oil from the pellets before they put them in the tin. Now, whether H&N use any um, any lubricating oil on their wire, I'm I'm not too sure. Not sure. Uh, possibly they will do in order uh, to, for it to act as a release agent to get from the uh, the diet or the pellet press. But the thing to take from this is that uh, once the wire is produced or the lead wire is produced in stalls, uh, spools, um, there's no heat used in the process. It is a cold pressing system and they have pellet shaped dies with very accurate tolerances in their machine that are fed either a slug of wire or a lead ball uh, that's then pressed into the shape of the Diablo pellet that we've all come to know. So that's the basic roundup of my introduction to air gun pellets. One of the things that you're going to probably be wondering is what is my recommendation for um, pellets, which pellets you know, should you buy, what size or whatever. I've already covered some of that um, when talking about the uses of pellets for um, target shooting and hunting and also uh, the starting point for what weight of pellet to, uh, uh, to use. Um, as, a, as I mentioned earlier, it's, a, it's very much a case of trial and error, uh, even amongst um, same air rifles. You know, you might have the same air rifle as somebody else and uh, you will find that your air rifle performs better with a completely different uh, pellet or um, uh, type of pellet or manufacturer pellet that uh, somebody else you know has, has the same air rifle. So um, it is trial and error. One thing that I would say is that you get what you pay for. If you're just plinking and you're shooting a lot of pellets and you're not too bothered about accuracy then by all means go out and buy the cheapest pellet that you can, you can find. That makes sense. Um, but if, you're, if you want ac accuracy either because you're target shooting or you're hunting then I would say that you get what you pay for and you can't go far wrong with uh, starting with the, the more premium pellet brands such as uh, JSB, H&N, uh, Air Arms, QYS or um, even RWS. Um, so I would probably stick with the major brands to begin with and, uh, and then you've got a comparison to work from and over time you can determine whether there are other pellets that are performing better than the ones you're currently using. One thing I would say is take care of your pellets. Make sure that uh, you know wherever you're storing them or if you've got them in a pouch or in your pocket you're not squishing the skirts up because obviously that's going to affect their performance. So look after them. Uh, you will notice that I haven't mentioned uh, pellet preparation such as uh, salting, weighing and um, sizing pellets. Um, <laughs> that's a whole different story. Um, I do intend to uh, make a, another video in the future where I will be uh, looking at uh, the myths about pellets and myth busting some of these things. All that I would say now is, is if you're on the start of your air gun or air pistol journey uh, your time will be better spent practicing shooting and get getting uh, uh, you know improving your marksmanship uh, than it would spending time washing preparing and sizing pellets because the time that you spend practicing uh, and developing good principles of marksmanship uh, will have a bigger effect on your scores than any preparation of pellets will do. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.